This is a Ferrari Enzo. Actually it's not, it's the original press kit from when the car was unveiled in 2002 in Maranello. That's a Ferrari Enzo. This press kit is actually mine. I was there at the original unveiling back in the day when I was a really young, fresh-faced motoring journalist. Oh, yeah. Actually back then, my old editor, who's actually quite good at his job, said to me, oh Matt, nah, you're not really cut out to be a car reviewer. You better just stick to writing news stories about cars. I think he got that a bit wrong, didn't he? So if anyone tells you you can't do your dream job, ignore them. Anyway, enough of hashtag living my best life bull Let's crack on with this review. So, Ferrari Enzo, cost around 400,000 pounds in 2002. Now this one, two million quid. But before I review it, subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon to turn your notifications on. Let's kick off by talking about the design because this is a very, very distinctive car, actually designed by Pininfarina. I wouldn't say it was beautiful, it's striking, but it's certainly functional. So every vent does something. There's loads of vents here at the front and that nose is clearly inspired by Formula One. There's huge vents in there as well for the radiator fans. And as you move down the side, look, centre locking wheel nuts with the prancing horse on them. Also, you don't have door mirrors, you have proper old fashioned wing mirrors. I also love the way you've got a single windscreen wiper blade. This is definitely my favourite bit. The dihedral doors. What a cool way to get into a car. Like I said, every vent does something, so that sends air into the engine, which you can see it on full display underneath this plexiglass engine cover, and you've got carbon fiber on the intake plenum and on the rocker covers, lovely. Moving to the back, if you look at the design of this rear end, you can see that it previewed the F430, then you've got this mesh area here, which allows you to just look in and see all the mechanicals. This one is actually missing the silencer for the exhaust because it's been straight piped. You're going to get to hear it in a bit. There we've got a huge diffuser, not the active aero you get on the very latest Ferraris, though this rear wing is active, so when you're driving along, it does pop up. Look, we've got four exhausts and they are real. There are no extensions to make them look bigger than they are. They are the diameter they need to be. And I'll illustrate that with the car wow. Big stick of truth, look at that. Oh yeah. I can't believe I just poked a two million pound Ferrari Enzo with a stick. Motor in journalism, completed it, mate. This is quite a compact car here on the inside and it's super simple, the design, but really, really cool. I just love the layout and the look of it. I mean, there's not too much here on the center console, which are all your main controls, really. So you've got your ventilation systems and actually the rubberized buttons are starting to feel a bit sticky because they're old. <laughs> then you've got the start button there, it has warning lights, your parking lights, your fog lights, and then the controls to your mirrors, which once again are sticky with age. Then there's leather up here on the dash, which is quite nice. So the stitching on here, I mean, oh my God, you can tell this is a hand-built car. It's a bit wonky. And these bucket seats are absolutely gorgeous. Look, we've got proper racing harnesses though. Don't worry, because they're faff when you're just like driving it normally. You do have a normal seat belt as well, which is handy. Some other things I like about it are this, look, so the steering wheel. Interesting fact, so you know how sports car steering wheels now have flat bottoms? This one is flat topped. That's changed. However, this car really did start off the whole thing for Ferrari, having buttons on the steering wheel. So we've got the indicators here and here. You've got your mode buttons there. You've got your lift there for the nose, so you can go over some slightly bumpy ground or maybe up some curbs and into your driveway. Do not press that button by mistake. That's the reverse. There's your traction control. You can turn off your ASR and then that's your race mode as well. There's some other controls here, things like your windscreen wipers and your lights. The pedals for the gearbox are here, mounted on the steering column and they're nice and big so you can always hit them even when you're going around corners if you need to. And of course, they're made out of carbon fiber. I also love this. The fact you've got these huge gaps in the fascia so you can actually see into the steering column. It's clear evidence that this is a race car for the road. Oh, there are some shift lights here on the steering wheel to tell you when to shift up. The actual layout of the instrument binnacle is really, really clear. Nice central rev counter. You have a little digital readout for your gear selection. And then you've got your speedometer, which on this car is in kilometers an hour. This is a left-hand drive car. In fact, you can only get the Enzo as a left-hand drive car. Pininfarina did offer to do a conversion to make it right-hand drive, but nobody did it. None of the 399 people who bought one. And I know that's how many were built because it says down here on the plaque, 399 limited production, though there obviously will have been some prototypes. Down here, there's a plaque 
with Enzo's signature. And there's another plaque over there which commemorates the fact that Ferrari won the Formula One World Championship in 1999, 2000, 2001, 2002 and 2003. So yeah, they were on a roll back then. The rest of the interior, well, carbon fibre literally everywhere. Obviously this car's main chassis is built out of carbon fibre and it's lovely the way it's exposed and used. You've got leather here on the roof lining, which does feel quite luxurious. What's not so luxurious is the fact there's no air conditioning at all. So it can get quite hot in here and the windows are windy windy to save weight. The winding mechanism is kind of cool though. I like that. So too is the way you open the door. You don't get it like, because you can't get at it. The way you do it is just slide your hand under there, pull that lever, and then use your forearm to pop it up. The seating position, as you can imagine, is spot on, and you can adjust the steepness of the backrest by doing that. And you can, of course, slide the seat forward and backwards. And there is, well, enough room for me. I think even if you're tall, you're probably going to just about be okay in this car. The pedal box is a bit offset to the right, though, so the brake's actually where you think the throttle should be, and there's a footrest where you think the brake might be, but there we go. The passenger also has a footrest as well, so they can brace themselves while you're hurtling around corners, which is very easy to do in this car. There is a bit of practicality as well, so look, you've got some storage there, some more there, and a little bit there for the passenger. Isn't that nice, eh? And look, oh, there's a net here. Speaking of which, I do quite like this leather lining. That's lovely, that is. And a 12-volt socket, so you can charge your mobile phone. One thing I should point out, though, is this. It may look like a glove box, but it's not. That's just the airbag. There's no storage there. And you have a fly-off handbrake. You just lift it up like that, and then you just do it the opposite to release it. The only thing I don't like, really, is this rear-view mirror. It's all just a bit cheap. But overall, what a beautiful, interesting car to sit in. When you open the door, you can see some more of the impressive engineering that's gone into this car, such as this aluminium door hinge. Then you've got these three levers here. So the front one is for the front boot. This one here is for the fuel filler cap. And this one here is for the engine bay cover. Let's check out the boot space, shall we? Well, as you can see, there is not much room in there at all. And it's actually ram pack full of maintenance stuff. It's all buckled down like posh luggage. So in this first one here, oh, it looks like it could be quite exciting, but it's actually the security bolt for removing the center nut on the wheels. Then in this next one, you have, well, what could it be? What could it be? It's so exciting. The Ferrari toolkit with Ferrari branding on it. Bet that'll fetch a lot on eBay. I like the Ferrari badge on there as well. Get that back in there. What's in this one? Come on, let's have a look. This is the tyre repairing goop, because obviously yeah, the, <laughs> there's no spare wheel on one of these. It's like a bloody puzzle. Oh, the Italians don't make stuff easy. Right. And then in this other one, it's lovely actually, there is a trickle charger for the battery. Oh God, I can't be asked to put all that back together. Let's go to another scene. Well, here it is then, the engine bay. It's awesome. Everything is completely exposed. You can see the carbon fibre here, the heat shielding here, the coilovers for the suspension here. But this is what matters. The 6-litre V12 naturally aspirated engine, 660 horsepower, 660 newton metres of torque. It drives the rear wheels through a six-speed, single-clutch, robotised manual gearbox. Obviously, you use the pedal shifters. And it revs out this engine all the way to 10,000 RPM. Then the red line comes in at 8,000. It's an absolute beast. Not to 60, 3.1 seconds. Top speed, 221 miles an hour. In fact, this car went round the Nürburgring in seven minutes, 25.21 seconds. What the bloody hell was that for? You said if you mentioned the Nürburgring in any video, we get to kick you in the arse. <gasps> the Nürburgring. 991. Nürburgring. <coughs> oh, yeah. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. This was a super expensive car, yet it didn't come with a radio. You couldn't even get one as an option. What are you supposed to listen to? That V12? <laughs> there is no vanity mirror for the passenger, so how the heck is your supermodel girlfriend supposed to check her makeup is straight? It's a bit sexist. So how is your supermodel boyfriend supposed to check his hair's looking good? The engine cover is so wide and it flexes that you need a helper to lift it. So are you ready? Three, two, one, go. 
We also have this car's name back to front. It's supposed to be called the Enzo Ferrari after the man himself, but we all call it the Ferrari Enzo. So in reverse, imagine if we called the Volkswagen Golf the Golf Volkswagen. The mechanism for the front lift isn't necessarily noisy. Have a listen to this. It's like some electric drill. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the Colway five core cool features. The Enzo was the first Ferrari to come with carbon ceramic brakes as standard for better repeated braking performance on track. Now every single Ferrari gets them. The brace for the engine cover is actually obviously in the engine bay and you fit it like this. You can just imagine when they first had this thing, Maybe someone drove the car and then they wanted to look into the engine bay. They're like, pick this up. We're like, oh my God, this is so hot. And then they figured out that they should probably wrap it in some heat resistance material, which is a bit like your oven gloves, so you don't burn your hand if you want to check out your engine. If you're filming this car on cold days, you can actually warm your hands on the exposed radiator. The fans will just blow nice warm air over them and stop you getting chill blades. You know how the plaque inside the car says there is 399 of these Enzos built? Well, actually, there was a 400th. It was given to the Pope, who then auctioned it off for charity. It's only the driver that gets a knee pad protector. The passenger doesn't, because that does help keep the weight down, you know. And FYI, this car weighs 1,480 kilos. I promise you guys I'll let you hear it start. Like I said before, it's been straight piped, so I'm having to stand away from it so I'm not deafened. But here we go. Go on, then. That literally made me jump. <laughs> Give me some more revs. That's amazing. First time driving a Ferrari Enzo. I feel honoured. And it's something I've always wanted to do since I became a motoring journalist, so. Here we go. Just take it easy, away from the start. You can hear it just wanting to go. Let's try and roll on. Third from around 50. Oh, wow! That is insane. <laughs> I'm gonna be brutally honest quick but modern cars are so quick now that it's not bend your mind quick but it's really intoxicating the way it just builds the power as you go through that rev range and there's something really visceral about it oh that is lovely oh wow on oh, the power at the top end i just can't get enough of that i'll tell you what i want to do i want to try the brakes for about 100 miles an hour so i'm doing 100 I'm just going to emergency stop it. Oh, it's squirming. It's squirming. Oh, the, the final bit is <laughs> really vicious when you're braking hard. Oh, that's fun. Oh, this engine. This is like a real dream come true driving this. Absolute dream come true. You hear all the stones just bouncing around. There's no soundproofing. It is a race car for the road. This is just totally raw. And the steering, I mean, I'm, I'm on a runway, but the steering just feels lush. Steering on modern cars isn't like this. It's just not. I'm sorry. It's just not. This is just wonderful. I wish I was on a track to actually drive it properly, but this is all I'm getting. And to tell you the truth, I'll take that. I'll take that. I've had a go in a Ferrari Enzo. Childhood dream, not childhood, sorry. Um, journalistic dream of mine. I think the 288 GTO was probably not even out when I was a child, but yeah, I've ticked a big box with this. What a lovely, lovely car. Man. So then, what's my final verdict on the Enzo Ferrari? Yeah, should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should avoid it. It's crap. 
Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, I just wanted to say a big thanks to Andrew here for sorting out the car for me to review. Now, if you click over there, you can go check out his channel and find out about a chance to win something, apparently. Yes, guys, you can win a free one-hour drive in our brand new Lamborghini Aventador S Roadster, and you also get a free MacBook Air. So click over there, check it out.